Well, welcome everyone to the Handyman's Guide to SolidWorks. Uh, I want to thank everyone for taking a moment to come see these handy tips uh, that us AEs use uh, to get out of jams. I'm Brandon Nelms. I will be your host for today. Uh, I am a mechanical engineer out of Indianapolis, uh, an application engineering manager here with Go Engineer. Uh, got a couple of boys, and it feels like as of late, all I've been doing uh, is youth baseball, a ton of youth baseball. Uh, but I do do some handyman work from time to time. And here are some of the more appealing projects I've done over the years. And forgive me if I didn't take any pictures of the countless toilets, ceiling fans, garbage disposals, dishwashers, and furnaces that I've worked on too. Um, I'm really blessed to have a great garage to get a lot of uh, this kind of work done. But as a handyman, every handyman has to have a good toolbox to take with them, especially when you're not 100% sure uh, what the job entails. Now I'm talking about those must have tools that can get you out of a jam. Maybe not necessarily the right tools all the time, but with you know, this toolbox, a handyman can solve almost any problem or at least stop the hemorrhaging. So speaking of hemorrhaging, let's start with one of my go-to favorites for water problems, vice grips. Uh, these are perfect for stubborn leaky faucet stems, nuts or bolts, and an absolute must have. So we'll put that in our toolbox. Most handymen always have uh, duct tape on them. And speaking for myself, if someone asks for duct tape and I don't have any, I feel ashamed as a human being. So got to make sure we've got that in our toolbox. The next must have uh, is rope. I have at least uh, two paracord ropes in my handyman bag. Uh, they're super strong and sometimes I'm working by myself so I can use uh, you know, the rope as extra hands and we'll put that in our, our toolbox. I feel that like this, uh, this one is a bit of a cheat here, but a good multi-tool is a must have. This way you've got pliers, a knife, a saw, you know, various screwdrivers all in one. And in Boy Scouts, you know, it was all about the Swiss Army knife. Uh, the multi-tool is just the Swiss Army knife's bigger brother, so we'll put that in the toolbox. Next is WD-40. Uh, it's the uh, other half of duct tape, right? So if it's supposed to move and doesn't, we use WD-40. So we'll put that right in the toolbox there. And if you thought the multi-tool was a cheat, well, here's a real cheat. Uh, how about the toolbox itself, uh, which for me is a five-gallon bucket. So we'll do some inception and put the bucket in the toolbox, which is the toolbox. So the toolbox in the toolbox, just uh, don't think about it too much. Uh, and our last tool here is the rubber mallet. Uh, I used to just carry a regular claw hammer in this spot, uh, but it's uh, just too easy to break things with. Um, and so, you know, I'll use a rubber mallet from time to time uh, when we've got, you know, some things that need some convincing, but a little less damaging here. So we'll put that in our toolbox. And just like we would have for a handyman toolbox, uh, those go-to tools. We also have the equivalent uh, go-to tools for our SolidWorks toolbox. Uh, basically those tools for how we can fix, you know, the problem enough to get out of a jam. And our first tool in the handyman toolbox was vice grips uh, because vice grips are all about getting a grip on a face. And when you've got gripes about surfaces, We'll, we'll stick with that. Uh, we can use a tool called replace face. So the replace face command is a surfacing tool that can be very quickly bring a lot of complexity uh, to a design very easily when you already have you know, a blocky starting point. Uh, here you can see my starting point in the design is it's not too complex, just traditional bosses and cuts and some fillets uh, to get to a, a finished shape. We're using the whole wizard doing some mirror features um, and getting just a, an overall rough shape, uh, even using a shell operation. But what if we wanted something to look more complex, you know, something that has a more curvy, swoopy shape, something like this? Uh, the question is, do we need to redo all of those bosses and cuts? Uh, because this is a very dramatically different design compared to where we started. 
Well, luckily not with replace face. To start, we're gonna roll back the design to where we have the main face or faces that we wanna change. And for complexity's sake, I created this shape with multiple features that I understand could have been done with just one extrude. Uh, but I wanted to help show how the replace face command really can be used on any finished 3D shape. Anything that is done, we can use this uh, replace face command. So now I've got a couple of sketches here uh, that are comprised of splines. And as a quick aside, I'm, I'm using style splines here. And, and I love style splines because you can get fully defined sketches. Uh, style splines are manipulated with the control polygon, which is comprised of straight lines, which we know are much easier to get fully defined. So if you're ever needing to do spline work, uh, I think style, style splines are a great way to go and still ensure full definition. And with these two sketches, I'm gonna create a boundary surface. Boundary surfaces are great uh, because as you can say, see here, when I select them from the tree, I don't necessarily need multiple sketches to go to and from like I would with a loft. Uh, boundary surface shapes can be influenced equally in both directions. So you can see the surface just extends out. Uh, so with these two simple sketches, I can get a full surface. And if we look at our other surface here, uh, we can see uh, that part of it cuts through the body of the part and part of it extends past the body. Uh, and this is the real key differentiator for replace face. Uh, initially, we might think of this and say, well, let's just cut it like with cut with surface. But then you can see we still have part of the shape missing. Uh, so it's not really the correct answer. And we might do, uh, you know, convert entities and extrude up to uh, that surface. Uh, but that's really multiple features that I don't want to have to do. So what we really want to do is use the replace face command, which can be found on the surfaces tab of the command manager uh, or via insert face replace face. And replace face is a really awesome tool. Uh, we simply select the face or faces that we want to change, and then we select what surface we want to change it with, and boom, we've got our faces replaced uh, in that finished shape taken care of. So then we can roll our design to the end and see an error. Uh, this is not uncommon uh, for a replace face type of design change. Uh, just like we would expect dangling relations if we were to delete and create new sketch entities, uh, dangling sketch relations uh, can, or sketch errors can ha happen for the replace face command, uh, but they can be repaired the same way you would you know, repair any other design intent uh, that needs to be fixed, either um, re re repairing that or uh, adding the design intent back in. But relatively quickly, we can get our finished design. Uh, with a very little effort, we get this nice curvy swoopy shape uh, without having to scrap the whole design or start over. So no more griping about surface problems. Uh, the replace face is a super simple way to get you know curvy swoopy finishes without really needing to scrap everything. Our next tool in the toolbox was duct tape. Uh, we all know how duct tape can patch any kind of problem. Uh, it's not the best looking fix, but you know it works. Uh, and in SolidWorks, that tool is the delete face command. So back in our design, we've got some counter bore holes here uh, that we've decided need to be changed to a countersunk hole. Uh, and since you know we use the hole wizard, you know this kind of a change is really easy. We're just going to change the hole type from the hole wizard. But when we look back at our design to see how the fillet comes down relative to the counter bore hole here, we need to use an extruded cut, or we needed to use an extruded cut to remove some of that excess material uh, that doesn't, and, and that cut doesn't look right now uh, for our counter bore design because of that fillet. So normally we might think to, uh, how are we gonna fix this? Well, we could use copy surfaces, uh, so we could come in and offset a surface to zero, which will be a copy surface, um, and then use uh, that surface for trimming operations, like extending it out and then trimming back. Uh, but that seems like a lot of work. Um, instead, what we're going to use is the delete face command. And this is on the surfaces tab. So to get rid of these faces here, uh, we'll go to the uh, either uh, 
command manager or using insert face delete face. And now by simply selecting the faces that we want to remove, uh, we can use a handy option uh, called delete and patch. When we select this option, what's going to happen is it's going to remove the faces and attempt to extend and trim surrounding faces uh, to make it back to a solid like those faces were never there. Uh, so this will get us our cleaned up design without having to worry about removing that cut. The de delete face command is really powerful. Uh, we can use it not only to patch areas, but also remove faces and fill areas. So let's say I have an area here where I wanna change the blending of this fillet. Uh, the normal traditional fillet doesn't look exactly how I want. So here I'm gonna use a straight line sketch across this face to represent where I actually want the start of my blend to occur. And then I can use that sketch using the split line command uh, to break up that face, basically projecting that onto that sketch onto the face. So now I have multiple faces in here. And on my fillet at the top, I wanna trim back some of the area uh, that we're working with by splitting the face right at the vertex. Uh, and if I'm creating, uh, if I create a face curve at that vertex, we get a 3D sketch uh, that represents the line that I wanna use to split the face. So using the face curves, simply selecting face curves, selecting the face and the vertex, and then unselecting any of those sketch entities I don't want. Uh, and we'll get that 3D sketch spline there that represents where I'm gonna to wanna to trim back this face. Now, unfortunately, I can't just use the split line command right away. Because it's a 3D sketch, it won't work with the tool. Uh, we need to use something else. And, and a hack that I've found is that it, uh, so if we see we try to use that spline, it's not gonna work. Um, and a hack that I've found uh, is that the spline that's created in the 3D sketch of a face curve uh, can be used to make a reference plane. And then that reference plane could then be used uh, to split the face. So once we've created that plane, now we can do an intersection split line uh, to split that face up. Just saves us from having to do surfacing trim operations. And on the other side, we can use that same face curve to reference plane uh, procedure to break up the face, how I'm gonna want it to be here. So we've got our spline, going to use our reference plane uh, and then split the face. So now I've got my split faces for where I want to change this blend. So I have all of the faces that I want to get rid of and change. So now I'm ready to use the, uh, the delete face command to delete these faces. And we've already used the delete and patch command. Um, but a delete and patch here is going to just result in the same geometry if we just extend surfaces, right? Uh, so I don't really want to use delete and patch. What I want to use is delete and fill, which will put in a surface. And if we don't check the tangent fill, it'll be a contact surface. But we want everything tangent, so we'll check that box. And we can see everything is nice and tangent for those surfaces, all that area for that blend. And it's nice and blended throughout, but if I want to double check that, I can use the evaluate tab to do a quick evaluation of my curvature. Uh, the delete and fat, uh, delete and fill option is gonna be great for this kind of work uh, so that we can see, uh, but it's really best for three or five sided plus holes. Uh, let's look at the other side of the design here uh, to see how I probably should have done a four sided patch for a four sided hole. Now, whenever we're working on surfaces and we've got four sides, we really should be using a loft or a boundary surface. So in this case, I'm gonna use the delete face command again, uh, but I'm actually gonna launch it from the right mouse button menu. So if you right click on a face, expand your menus, you will see the delete face command is right available there. And with my faces selected, I'll just use the delete option. And this turns my solid body into a surface body with a hole. So now I can build a lofted surface from one side of the hole to the other. And in this case, through the use of guide curves, I'll select where I'm gonna go to and from and what my guide curves are. 
Uh, and that will allow me to have my loft go more controlled where I want that start and finish. So in my start and end constraints, we'll make sure we've got our tangency across the board to get a much better blend here. From there, I can now knit these two surface bodies together uh, and use the option uh, to create a surface once we've knitted them together. So simply knitting the surface, selecting the two bodies and creating a solid. And from there I've got now, if we take a look at our curvature, a much nicer blend there. So we've got a different blend method. So remember, if we need to patch up a problem and it's that short term type of fix, uh, the delete face command is a, is a great tool uh, to get us there. Now let's take a look at our rope. Our next tool is rope. And in Solid, SolidWorks, uh, sometimes we need to tie pieces of design intent together uh, that we really can't do with traditional maybe relations or end conditions. So when that's the case, we're going to use global variables. For our design here, we've added some lettering with our company name. Uh, to get the lettering the way we wanted, we had to use the thicken command on a bunch of surface bodies. Uh, but unfortunately, we couldn't do it all in one operation. The thicken command only does one body at a time. Um, and But we'd really like to tie all of these values together with one universal piece of design intent. I don't wanna have to change 15 different dimensions every time I wanna change that thickness. So if I select one of the resulting faces, uh, I can see a corresponding dimension in the graphics if I've got instant 3D on. I can then double click on that, that uh, value to edit uh, with the modify box. And this is where I'll create a global variable on the fly by typing the equals quote, then my global variable name and an end quote, and then select create global variable. Uh, this is a very handy method for creating global variables in situations where you create a feature but the property manager won't allow you uh, to create a global variable using the graphics interface, uh, just the viewport there, uh, and Instant 3D will allow you to do that. So now if we select the same face, uh, we're gonna see uh, for this one thickened command that it's actually controlled by a global variable uh, in an equation because of that red sigma sign. So that shows us that it's a global variable or an equation that is controlling uh, that dimension. So we'll also see that there is now an equations folder in our design tree here uh, where we can right click and edit global variables or modify equations, uh, add them in, add comments to our global variables uh, so we know what they're for. And if we fast forward in time to where we've tied all of these dimensions together uh, to the same global variable, uh, we're going to see in our equations folder now a full listing of many dimensions with one global variable controlling everything. So now if we change this one global variable, all of those dimensions are going to update and our model is going to update. So real quick and easy way to get uh, easy changes through for multiple places where we can't tie uh, traditional end conditions or relations uh, type of design intent. So remember, when you need to connect design intent together, you can do that with global variables. Our next tool was the multi-tool, and in SolidWorks, uh, it, the SolidWorks intersect command allows us to use multi-bodies uh, to define the resultant geometry that we are trying to create. So for the opposing face, uh, we want to add some letterings again, uh, but this time we're going to use a different approach. Here we've created a single thickened face uh, and copied a surface and used split lines projected from a sketch and then a bunch of ruled surfaces from those edges to represent essentially the uh, finished shape that we're after. So we're using these ruled surfaces to do this. And if you haven't used a ruled surface before, you can think of it like a ruler. Uh, ruled surfaces are kind of like straight surfaces uh, that just extend linearly, uh, just doing that in three dimensions. Uh, the ruled surface is a great option for this application because we want to have the lettering thickness be 
perpendicular to the curving surface. So here we're using normal to surface uh, to create that and make that happen. With our thickened body and our multiple surface bodies uh, visible here, we can now slice and dice multiple ways with the intersect command, which can be found on the command manager or insert features intersect. Now in the property manager of the intersect command, I can select any combination of surface bodies, solid bodies, or planes. And a box selection uh, can make quick work of populating this box. And then we choose if we want intersecting regions, internal regions, or both. And to be honest, most of the time I just use both because it's pretty quick and then I'll be able to pick what I want from there. When we're ready, we simply set select intersect. In the intersect command slices and dices and figures out what different resultant bodies can come from our selected grouping. Uh, and then we're gonna determine what bodies we wanna keep and what ones we wanna get rid of. The key to this command is we need to make sure that when the intersection occurs, that no edge will be created that has more than two faces. That's when we get that uh, zero thickness error. So in this case, everything intersected real nice. Uh, if we have to, we can always extend surfaces so we know they go past bodies and we don't have to worry about it. Now, to make the selection process easier for what we want to keep, uh, we can choose to show what bodies are included, which ones are excluded, uh, or a mixture of both. Uh, the excluded regions uh, and mixture are particularly helpful if you select to exclude a you know, a body you didn't intend to. So if we're picking through and I pick one extra one, uh, good luck looking through the region list and trying to figure out what number region that is. Well, simply changing the selection method makes it easier uh, to see what ones we've selected and what ones we haven't, or bring back ones we didn't intend on excluding. Now I know I won't need any of the ruled surfaces for any other downstream operations, so I'm gonna select consume surfaces to get rid of them. Uh, that'll get rid of those extra surfaces right from within this command. And by selecting OK, uh, SOLIDWORKS creates all the new solid bodies from those intersections. So I've got everything I was after. And now that we have the solid bodies for our lettering, uh, but before we move on, we need to get rid of extra bodies. Uh, we got rid of the ruled surfaces, but I've got one other unnecessary body uh, that we didn't don't need anymore that was used to generate the edges for the ruled surfaces. So if I right click on that and uh, select delete keep bodies, uh, I can use that to, uh, I can use that to get rid of extra bodies that I don't need. So we wanna try and make sure to keep our bodies uh, nice and clean. So now, now to join everything together, we can use the com combine command which can be found through insert features combine, or if you're using SOLIDWORKS 2022 or newer, uh, simply using the S key allows me to search and launch right from the quick shortcut bar. Um, with that quick box selection now, I can select everything uh, to get one finished body. So I've got one solid body that finishes it. So we need to use the intersect command the next time you need to slice and dice. Our next tool is the WD-40, and in SOLIDWORKS, that's actually two tools, uh, knit and radiate. Uh, more specifically, uh, knitting to a radiated surface. Uh, and why? Well, because I think it's just a slick way to solve some problems. For the next part of our design here, we added some ridges along the top, and I did so using a varying pattern. Uh, unfortunately, to get the finished result we wanted, we had to add some extra extruded bosses uh, starting on the front plane, but this adds material to the inside of our design here that we don't want. Now we're left to figure out how do we get rid of these extra internal faces? And if I'm in a huge hurry here, uh, we could try using the duct tape method, right? Uh, which was delete and patch. Uh, and we're gonna see that actually works really nice. It actually cleans this up. But this isn't the most parametric approach. Uh, if we add or remove ridges, we're gonna have errors in our tree here. 
uh, that we have to deal with. So I don't want to use delete and patch. Let's do a better solution than duct tape. A much slicker approach here is to roll back to a point in the design prior uh, prior to the having all of the ridges in the design uh, and create a radiated surface. So we go back in the design here to a point prior in our design and create a radiated surface via the menus, insert surface, radiate. So in the property manager, uh, we can select a direction of radiation, which is a similar selection to the direction for a pattern. And in this case, we'll select the bottom face, and then we need to select the edges that we wanna radiate. And we can do that with a quick selection of tangency to pick all of those edges, and that'll propagate all of the edges. But another great selection method for the loop of edges that aren't tangent to one another is to left click on an edge away from the closing closing edge uh, and on the other edge on the opposing half right click and select partial loop this is a very handy method to select multiple edges all at once especially if they're not tangent and then we're going to simply add a distance that's far enough uh, for the radiated surface to be easily selected and now here comes the slick part we're gonna launch the knit surface command. And hidden within the knit surface command is a powerful option that only appears when you select a radiated surface. So when you select a radiated surface, you're gonna get this pink box that pops up in the property manager. As if by unlocking some secret key here, we now have the option to pick a seed face. Uh, this face is meant to be any big face that we know is always going to be there regardless of a design change and then solidworks is going to grab all of the corresponding faces that touch that seed face traveling down through to the radiated surface face so we'd get everything inside of there all of those faces now when we select okay we get an error uh, this is because we have holes in the design and when the, connecting all the faces, SolidWorks says that's all the faces to the part that can't possibly be right. Uh, so we need to include the, these extra surface bodies that I created beforehand uh, to close off these holes. Once we've selected those and we click OK, almost as if some magic, we've got this awesome surface body inside and simply hiding the body with a tab key. We can see hiding the solid. We've got now this surface body that is our inset body. So now when we roll to the end of our design, uh, we can have anything inside of the part. Uh, and now we can use a cut with surface to remove all that junk every time. So we've got our surface solid body, we've got things inside that we don't want, and we'll use cut with surface. Uh, this is also a great tool to maybe clean out the internals of a design if you're trying to you know, save some IP and don't want to put extra information out before you save something to a, a step file or something. A really slick way uh, to get things accomplished. So when you want to be slick, just like WD-40, uh, use radiate to a knit surface. Now let's take a look at our next tool, which was the toolbox itself, which for me was the bucket. So in SolidWorks, when you need to catch problems, you can use the check command. Now back in our design here, we've got these ridges that need some nice fillets on the top to smooth the transition. And earlier in the design, I added a sketch, which is a converted entity of the line I wanna use for a split line uh, to split the face up on top here. Now I'm doing that because of the fillet type that I wanna create. Uh, I wanna create, I need a model edge here for the fillet that I wanna create, which is a curvature continuous hold line face fillet. Uh, so if we select the hold line, this allows us to pick the different edges that we want the curvature, curvature continuity to start and end from, and we're going to get the fillet exactly the way we want, which is real nice. But since it's a fa face, face fillet, I need to repeat that process uh, for the next ridge. But in doing so, uh, and we select everything, SolidWorks says it won't work, um, which is, means it's time for a rage montage. I don't know what's going on here. 
Um, and you know, actually, there's actually plenty of times where users show us AE's quirky problems or behaviors with SolidWorks that make no sense to us either. Um, and at this point, you know, we're left to look for other solutions to the modeling challenge. Um, but in this case, the only thing I can think of would be uh, offhand would be, you know, a lot of surfacing work. And I don't really want to do that. Um, and before I go through all that work, I want to double check the model to see if what we're working with is in good shape. Uh, because this face fillet should totally work. There's no reason that it, it would should have a problem. Uh, to use this check command, uh, it's our catch-all. Uh, and we can do that by launching it from the Evaluate tab of the Command Manager and selecting Check. The dialog box that pops up allows us to check the model integrity, and we can see that we have some self-intersecting faces. And this really shouldn't happen, uh, especially on a design that all of the features were created in SolidWorks. So if you've got a situation like this, uh, you need to report it to us so we can report it to SolidWorks to say, hey, when you create geometry in this way, it allows you to create geometry that's not possible, um, which is not what we should experience. So after reporting the problem, right, I still need to figure out what to do. And I don't want to wait for an SPR fix. I need to figure out where my problem originated. So I can continue to roll back in my design and use my check command and see what caused my geometry to go bad. And in this case, once I roll back past my split line and check, I've got no invalid faces. So I know that the feature that caused the problem was the split line. So look at the e looking at the edge highlighting, it looks like these edges were created from my split line or are a bit wonky. There's odd times, sometimes it's in between and some go way across. Uh, it doesn't seem right here. So I think I've been too greedy by using that single converted edge entity uh, was a bit too much. So instead, I'm gonna try splitting the faces up uh, with a series of splines that are connected uh, at the vert vertices and using tangent uh, tangency on those splines. And then working through my face fillets, uh, everything seems to work as normal. So repeating with the enter command uh, to repeat the command to do the fillet again and again, and it looks like everything is all good. But I'm still not 100% sold. So using the check command one last time to make sure everything is good, and in fact it is, so I'm good to go there. So even though the check command isn't really a tool that can change our model, right? The bucket isn't necessarily something that we're gonna use to fix something. It's really there to help us catch a problem. Now, our last tool was the rubber mallet. And in SolidWorks, uh, we know there's some sometimes where we're just gonna have to beat our designs into submission. Uh, for those scenarios, we're gonna use the split and combine tool. Over in our part here, I wanna replicate these ridges I created over to the other side with a mirror. Uh, and when I try everything I can think of to mirror those features across, whether I do it via features, uh, faces, using geometry patterns, nothing seems to work. For some reason, SolidWorks won't let me create that geometry. I'm getting frustrated. Well, I just need to beat this into submission. Uh, and the first thing I'll do is create a reference plane offset from the top plane here to a position that's gonna help isolate the portion of the model that I want to be the mirror. So I don't have to worry about mirroring the logo that would make it incorrect. Now I'm gonna divide the model using the split command, which can be found via e insert features split. And from here, I'll select the reference plane I created and the front plane, then select my select the option to cut the part. When I do this, the part's gonna be divided up and I can select what sections to keep or what sections I wanna separate. And with the body separated out, I have a smaller section now to work on. This is a great, command or a great approach for any localized operations, Well, which in this case was a mirror. More specifically, now I can do a body mirror. While I wasn't able to mirror faces and features to the geometry, I can mirror the body across because it's good, clean geometry. And then once I've got my localized operation taken care of, I can now join everything together with the combined command 
to get the results that I'm after just by beating this thing into submission. The split and combined technique is fantastic for any of these features that just won't finish out the way you want or you can't get it to work and you can only get it to work on a certain section. Split the part apart, do your features on the section that you can do it, combine the parts back together, and then you can do a blending operation to clean things up. So split and combine is a great way uh, to get your, your designs through with brute force if you have to. So wrapping up, looking at our SolidWorks toolbox that we have, when you need to get a grip on the new surfaces, use the replace face. When you need to patch a problem, use the delete face. If you need to tie design intent together uh, with your model, use global variables. When you, need, when you have a multi-body resultant design, use intersect. When you need to be real slick, you can use that knit to a radiated surface. And if you want to catch problems, use the check command. And lastly, if you want to use, if you need to just use brute force to get it done, you can always split a model and combine it back later. Now all of you have the SolidWorks Handyman toolboxes uh, that are all set to get you out of the essential jams. Uh, thank you for attending. If you'd like any more great content from Go Engineer, please visit our website or you can use the QR code here listed to reach me personally. And at this point, I'd like to open it up for any questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A and we'll take a look at them. So we got one question that came in. Will delete face work on non-SolidWorks parts, imported parts like step files? Yes, absolutely. The delete face command or replace face, really any imported geometry, uh, you can use other features too. And delete face is a great use of that tool. Um, if you've got imported geometry, uh, you can use delete face to get rid of holes or get rid of anything that's in there that you don't want. Um, as long as the geometry is clean. So that's where you're going to want to use your bucket, your catch all first to check your geometry and make sure it's clean uh, before you use the delete face command. And it looks like that's wrapping up for all of the questions. So thank everyone for attending and hope to see you all next time.